नमस्कार वेलकम टू ज्ञानी स्वर्ल्ड In this video, Gnanis World will be analyzing the religion of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Ikenkruz logo swastika. Before we continue, kindly like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. Dear viewers of Gnanis World, let us watch a video clip published in the Jaipur Dialogues YouTube channel with the title A Special Swastika of India vs Evil Cross of Hitler, West Defiled the Holy Symbol, Abhijit Chavda. Dated July 26, 2020. Found in the indigenous cultures of North America as an auspicious symbol in the indigenous cultures of South America and Central America. The only continent where the swastika is not seen is Australia. Now, apart from these things, the swastika has been observed very widely in the Christian world, which is very, very surprising because Christianity. essentially supplanted the old indo-european culture in europe via violent means and this has been depicted this has been brought out very nicely in the book the darkening age by catherine nixon so even though christianity supplanted and dismantled the indo-european culture throughout europe it still retained the swastika it essentially tolerated the swastika as if it was brought into into the christian symbology in a syncretic manner so you find swastikas in ch- in churches you find swastikas in the robes of various uh, christian clergy you find swastikas on on christian statues of christian sta- of our christian saints so it's found throughout the christian world it's also found in the islamic now dear viewers let us watch another video clip published in swaraj youtube channel with the title nazi symbol is not swastika how is hitler symbol of hate connected to christian theology cross डेटेड जुलाई 29, हिटलर के नाजी सिंबल को भारतीय स्वास्तिक से जोड़ने का प्रयास होता आया है लेकिन कई इतिहासकार मानते हैं कि नाजी हाकिन क्रूज वास्तव में ईसाई क्रॉस का ही एक रूप है हिटलर जहां पला बढ़ा वहां एक मठ में हाकिन क्रूज था और जिस ईसाई मठाधीश को हिटलर अपना आदर्श मानता था वह भी इस हाकिन क्रूज को धारण करता था द साइन ऑफ द क्रॉस पुस्तक में लिखा गया है कि हुक्ड क्रॉस ईसाइयों के विभिन्न प्रकार के क्रॉस में से ही एक है तो इसे स्वास्तिक से क्यों जोड़ना स्वयं हिटलर ने कहा था कि नाजी पार्टी सिंबल जर्मनी में दो ईसाई संप्रदायों को जोड़ने और ईसाई क्रॉस की तरह यहूदियों के विरुद्ध संघर्ष जारी रखने का राजनीतिक संकेत है वास्तव में पश्चिम स्वास्तिक पर दोष इसलिए देता आया है ताकि वह स्वयं ईसाई मत में निहित घृणा के इस ग्लानी भाव से बच सके Also, another video clip taken from Mission Kali Twitter handle, which was tweeted on August 30, 2020, stating Hitler was devout Christian. The last few years, there have been multiple attempts to associate Hitler with Hinduism. If anyone has any doubts about Hitler's unshakable allegiance to Christianity, please watch this video and retweet. Original quotes from Hitler to help settle the matter. <laughs>
Fear of Yosef Gnani's world. Hope by now you have understood why there is a need to analyze the religion of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Hikan Cruz logo swastika. And there is a hidden strategy which should not go unnoticed by the viewers of Gnani's world. This campaign was started by Hindutva fanatics in the month of July 2020. They have just posted three videos and many in this period are on social media promoting hate against Christian community by presenting the atheist Adolf Hitler as Christian. The Jaipur Dialogues posted on July 26, 2020 and after two days Swarajya posted on July 29, 2020 and then in some other fanatic YouTubers and in Twitter handles. We have picked three for your understanding. Oh, dear viewers of Nani's world, First, let us see whether Adolf Hitler is Christian or not. Some religious fanatic goes as far as to claim that Hitler was not only a Christian but agreed with a modern, intelligent design creationist and was also a religious fanatic, a Christian and a creationist. Dear viewers of Nani's world, this is a small attempt to open the eyes of these religious fanatics. Let God open their mind and help them in understanding to know the truth and abide in truth. Amen. Hitler made it clear that he hated Christianity and was going to eliminate it when the war ended. See, Kershaw, 2000. One reason Hitler hated Christianity was because he believed that it had crippled everything noble about humanity. Quoted in Kershaw, 2000, page 936. Dear viewers of Nani's world, a major reason Hitler opposed Christianity was because Hitler saw Christianity and science as a diametrically opposed to each other. Azar, 1990, p. 154. He concluded science would win and the Christian church would eventually in due time be destroyed. Hitler even believed science was a creation of the German race. Hitler was trying to use science, especially Darwinism, to create the utopia on Earth and he made it absolutely clear that there would be no place in this utopia for the Christian churches in his plan for the future of Germany. He realized that this was a long-term goal and was prepared to put off long-term ideological goals in favor of short-term advantage. Kershaw, 2000, page 238 Hitler had to take one battle at a time and elected to take on the fight with the churches in due time. The Christian church would be destroyed later and for now it was needed. Only after the war would Germany be able to fully implement the final solution to the Christian problem. Kershaw 2000 page 5 and 6. In the meantime, calm should be restored in relations with the churches. Kershaw 2000 page 39. But it was clear noted Goebbels, himself numbering among the most aggressive anti-church radicals, that after the war, it has to find a general solution. There is, namely, an insoluble opposition between the Christian and a Germanic heroic worldview. Kershaw, 2000, page 449. Hitler was main author of war, leaving over 50 million dead and millions more grieving their lost ones and trying to put their shattered lives together again. Hitler was the chief inspiration of a genocide, the likes of which the world had never known rightly to be viewed in coming times as a defining episode of the 20th century. The Reich whose glory he had sought lay at the end wrecked. The arch enemy, Bolshevism, stood in the Reich capital itself and presided over half of Europe. In its maelstrom of destruction, Hitler's rule had also conclusively demonstrated the utter bankruptcy of a hyper-nationalistic and racist world power ambitions and the social and the political structure that upheld them that had prevailed in Germany over the previous half a century and twice taken Europe and the wider world into a calamitous war. Kershaw, 2000, page 841. Actually, what drove Hitler was not his putative Christianity but rather the goal of implementing social Darwinism. Eradicating Jewish Bolshevism was central, not peripheral, to what had been deliberately designated by him as a war of annihilation. Kershaw, 2000, page 461. The Jews were like a tuberculosis from which a healthy body could become infected and therefore a germ must be destroyed lest it infect others. Kershaw, 2000, page 582. It was not Christianity that was central, but rather it was Darwinism that was central to Hitler and his regime. The Nazi regime's leader had sealed the fate with Hitler as a result of the 
bridging its genocide and the untold acts of inhumanity. But like a mortally wounded wild beast at bay, it fought with the ferocity and ruthlessness that came from desperation. And its leader, losing touch ever more with reality, hoping for miracles, kept tilting at windmills. Ready in Wagnerian style in the event of ultimate apocalyptic catastrophe and in the line with his undiluted social Darwinistic belief to take his people down in flames with him if it proved incapable of producing the victory he had demanded. Kursha 2000, page 615 Hitler saw Christians and the church as weak and as Lutzer noted, Hitler spoke of both Protestants and Catholics with contempt convinced that all Christians would betray their God when they were forced to choose between swastika and the cross. Do you really believe the masses will be Christians again? Nonsense, never again. That tale is finished. No one will listen to it again, but we can hasten matters. The Parsons will dig their own graves. They will betray their gods to us. They will betray anything for the sake of their miserable jobs and incomes. Altogether, Hitler's killing machine murdered 5 million Jews and 7 million Christians, a little published fact that caused Jewish historian Max Demont to declare that the world blinded itself to the murder of Christians by Nazi Germany, Demont, 1994. In Poland alone, 881 Catholic priests were annihilated, Azar, 199, page 154. In time, many more priests would end up in concentration camps. If one believes the anti-Semitic, one should also believe the anti-Christian, for both had a single purpose. Hitler's aim was to eradicate all religious organizations within the state and to foster a return to paganism. Demont, 1994. More documents that prove Nazis' plan to eliminate Christianity and convert its followers to Aryan philosophy are now on the online version of Rutgers Journal of Law and Religion. And dear viewers, now let us see what the Nazis' Hecken Cruise logo based on the India swastika. Swastika is Sanskrit word for an ancient geometric symbol, broadly used in Indic cultures. Amongst countries that were involved with World War II, it is associated with the Nazi flag, designed by Adolf Hitler, which used a stylized swastika referred as Hecken Cruise, hooked cross. As we have seen in the start of all popular Indian right-wing outlets video clips, they claimed that Hitler's use of the symbol had nothing to do with the Indic swastika and was instead entirely based on a Christian cross variant seen by Hitler at an Austrian monastery. Dear viewers of Nani's world, first we should see whether Hitler ever claimed that the Hakan Cruz used in the Nazi flag was derived from Christian Abbey or from an Indic use of a swastika. The words Hakan Cruz and swastika describe one and the same symbol, one time in Sanskrit and English, one time in German. Some believe that this is an ancient Germanic symbol, some that it is an ancient Indic. Both these schools argue with archaeology and unbroken tradition. Both claim that this is inherited from not a mere spreading but conquering Indo-European, Indo-Germanic abbreviated conglomerate of ancestors. In this case, until the 1940 popularly often called Aryans. This shared similarity falls flat for a criteria of original invention as there is ample prior art thousands of years older than any proponent of these claim can account for an apparent independent invention of older and of non-indo-european culture for this simplistic symbol to be found virtually everywhere european nationalists and hindu nationalists are therefore both wrong to at least come together in the claim we our ancestors invented this even if anyone should assert any broken tradition and continuity of cultures, which is also wrong in the first place. The waning but never extinguished popularity of the hooked cross in Europe was over time largely reinterpreted as to be read as a variant of a Christian cross. Only through the reception of Indian and other Eastern mysticism, religious ideas and the linguistic as well as ethno-cultural studies in the 19th century, some Europeans thought this Indian reading and thus Aryan of the symbol would have preserved the original or pre-Christian reading of the ancient symbol. The eventual Nazi use of the symbol is therefore formed in the reaction to the then newly found Indian tradition and thus inseparable from the Indian variant reading. This is directly traceable through European mystics, Aryan nationalists writing and usage. 
This political extremist right-wing reading of ultra-pangamonists and forgers of history became the dominating line of interpretation of the symbol in 1935 when it was made sole national flag of Germany. As the Hitler moment started in 1920, they enshrined with references to Eastern meanings and religion. This symbol as their own and through the popularity of Nazis and their iconography, this is now what we look at. A universal symbol of the most simplistic design that in the West has to be read as a meaning much different things than in any other parts of the world. Only for the post-1935 prescribed readings in the West did Hitler contribute to much original work. The swastika Hitler inherited from his ideological walkers, progenitors, is a universal symbol. The swastika as it came to be used under National Socialism is an inseparable in its intellectual tradition of reading a symbol from an Indian variant of it. Without the Indian version and its contemporary influence in 19th century European nationalism and a variety of other connected ideologies, the Nazi swastika is unthinkable. That swastika was in use in the right-wing nationalist movements of the time for decades when Hitler selected it as a trademark sign for his party. Until then and some time later, the symbol was still widely read as a non-specific to Nazism. Although this reading then came to dominate the interpretation, the symbol is never mentioned to be specifically Indian origin by Hitler himself, neither in speeches nor in his book Mein Kampf, nor is the monastery legend connected to Lombard. In his book, he only makes a fleeting mention that all of the proposals presented to him, many already included the swastika of some sorts. He has further selected the best one and finalized it in terms of orientation, color, scheme and proportions. It was his own by sheer coincidence as we're sure you will also believe. The claim originating therefore retells a lot of Nazi myth and is not true. The Indian swastika and the Nazi swastika are identical symbols. That does not say that both mean the same things. Symbols are empty vessels to be filled by an expectations of the spectator. They could mean the same thing. Symbol of right-wing hatred in white nations or Hindu nations or just good luck. The swastika Hitler's party chose only came to prominence in the nationalist thinking because it was known to be an ancient symbol of ancient India and the national Europeans invented a tradition of white conquest or Aryan expansion that claimed this symbol would be proof of European identity and dominance, only that Europeans largely forgot it. In the meantime, the Indian preserved this abstract artifact in the much more widespread manner. The supposedly connecting dot being their claim and claim to have excavated in Asia, the Europe, city of Troy where such symbols were found as well. Rivaling Indian finds at the time in terms of boy, that's old. The claim that Hitler saw a variation of the swastika symbol in an Austrian abbey as a young boy is true. But that he took this as an inspiration of repurposing a Christian symbol of a cross is a Nazi myth, invented or retconned only long after Hitler came to power. The symbolism in the monastery is clerical and thus Christian, as that one Benedictine abbot from the 19th century chose a non-right angle variant meant as a Christian cross as his personal heraldic symbol. While Hitler was deeply influenced by Catholicism and used its method and doctrines atavistically, the whole goal of his enterprise was to root it in a more original way, an older way as older was better. The pagan pre-Christian tradition of pre-Germanic people of the symbol has therefore precedence. The young Hitler got it from Abbe is a Nazi lie and not even an official Nazi lie. The swastika was in use in that nationalist scene long before Hitler joined any party. He never mentioned the connection to the Abbey and surely not as in Wander Hicken Cruz just like in my childhood Abbey. And local Nazis in Lambach, Austria took the opportunity to paint a short sting Hitler getting inspired as a city's great son after Anschluss in 1938. Despite the symbols only vaguely matching, representing different things. Hitler ignoring that completely and the folk etymology of a Hans Kruse giving rise to Hitler's Hicken Kruse being ridiculously far-fetched and easily seen as a completely ahistorical. You don't need to know Hitler's inner motives. They were quite out there. To be more precise, the motives to use swastikas were out there 
for Coca-Cola by Scots and California fruit producers. Dear viewers of Nani's World, now let us know about the man who brought the swastika to Germany and how the Nazis stole it. The motive were so out there that they disproved what this right-wing YouTubers wanted to prove. It wasn't a thousand-year-old monastery that inspired Hitler. It was thousand-year-old Troy city from Homer's Iliad. It was there where Dr. Schliemann discovered the Stone Age of old swastikas and described them as a sign of Aryan race. But in the late 19th century, Aryan meant the Indo-European language group. And this is the source of motive to use the swastika. Arthur de Gobaino made a connection of made-up Aryans, a race of pure humans and Germans. Early 20th century German nationalist group draw from stating that they are Aryans and therefore they have right to conquer neighbors as they are merely reclaiming old territory. To prove that they use the swastika symbol as a connection between them and the symbols found in Troy. In 1883, however, an Austrian schoolmaster, the gymnasium professor Karl Penka, published a monograph that made the claim that the Indo Europeans were indigenous to Europe and had expanded into the Orient by conquest. This notion of indigeneity soon began to receive support from German academics and by the turn of the century had achieved some level of academic respectability. The early proponents of an Indo-European origin in Germany clearly fed off anthropological speculation, yet they were also obviously arguing a national question. Very soon the connection between German, Germanic and Indo-European, the latter identity still to this day is usually termed as Indo-Germanish. It is Indo-Germanic in German was also to become a mainstay of Volker's thought too. With the sighting of the Aryan homeland in the North Germany, the Aryan identity received new importance. Chamberlain, after all, had bound classic antiquity and ancient Germany together as a chapter in an Aryan antiquity. He had used the term Aryan only in its anthropological sense, which is more clearly described as Nordic or Caucasian. But as the realization of the implications of Indo-European linguistics entered anthropological and archaeological discourse in the latter decades of the 19th century, the anthropological identity Aryan had become fused with the linguistic one. Aryan only properly designates the Indo-European people of India and Iran, and indeed the latter places named derived from Aryan. Yet. When Schleimans discovered symbols identical to Hindu swastikas among his much-publicized discoveries at Troy, swastikas became the symbol of an Occidental Aryan identity. The Greek of Homer, no longer the mythical figure they had once seemed, now representing the oldest of Occidental Indo-European cultures, one even as old as ancient India and Persia. As an occidental hallmark of Aryan culture, Shiman's swastika soon also came to penetrate Walke's literature. The connection between Aryan, Indo-Germanic and Teuton, Germanic, had achieved a physical, concrete and easily recognizable symbol. Goblet Dalviala's study was also employed to show that although the swastika was widely known throughout the world's cultures, the earliest examples of the symbols were attested only in Central Europe. Dalviala's diagrammatic depiction of the distribution of swastikas in Europe and Asia became the mainstay of the both academic and folkist interpretations of the origin and nature of the swastika. The swastika became the symbol par excellence of the Aryan, or in anthropological terms, the white race. In Hitler's mind camp, we get a glimpse of how this committee works for choosing a brand played out. Origins of the swastika flag Excepted from Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler, 1923. The organization of our monitor troop clarified a very important question. Up till then, the movement had no party insignia and no party flag. The absence of such symbols not only had momentary disadvantages but was intolerable for the future. Party comrades lacked any outward sign of the common bond. Hitler then writes about how he attended a mass Marxist demonstration, a sea of red flag, red scarves and red flowers. I have, in our movement, always upheld the standpoint that it is true good fortune for a German nation to have lost the old flag. From the bottom of our hearts, we should thank fate 
for having been gracious enough to preserve the most glorious war flag of all time from being used as a bedsheet for the most shameful prostitution. The present-day Reich, or which sell itself and its citizen, must never be permitted to fly the black, white and red flag of honor and heroes. The question of the new flag, that is, its appearance, occupied us intensely in those days. From all sides came suggestions. The new flag had to be equally a symbol of our own struggle, since on the other hand it was expected also to be highly effective as a poster. An effective insignia can in hundreds of thousands of cases give the first impetus towards interest in a movement. For this reason, we had to reject all the suggestions of identifying a movement through a white flag with the old state. White is not a staring colour. It is suited for Chase Washington's club, but not for world-changing movement in a revolutionary epoch. The assessments of various colours also. I myself always came out of the retention of the old colours, not only because as a soldier they are to me the holiest thing I know. Nevertheless, I was obliged to reject without exception the numerous designs which fought in, which for the most part had drawn the swastika into the old flag. I myself, meanwhile, after innumerable attempts, had laid down a final form, a flag with a red background, a white disc, a black swastika in the middle. After long trials, I also found the definite proportion between the size of the flag and size of the white disc as well as the shape and the thickness of the swastika. And this remained final. We have cut out a lot, but this whole passage makes interesting reading. It is pages 492 to 497 of the Houghton Mifflin edition, translated by Ralph Mannheim, 1971. Coincidentally, in this passage, Adolf Hitler explicitly rejects a shape more closely resembling the monastery symbol than what we later saw on Nazi flags. In this design finding stage for the brand, we are looking at the years 1919-1920. With the swastika being well-established Volkersk and anti-Semitic symbol, we also find Adolf Hitler still struggling to choose the correct version in contrast to his fate to complete characterization in Mein Kampf. Before May 1920, the sacred signs of the Germans, Teutons, one of these signs should be resurrected again by us. The direct connection between swastika using predecessor organizations in Germany and the NSDAP of Hitler, excluding the antecedent are militants like Freikorps, example, Marian Brigitte Erhardt, was Frederick Kron, the infamous dentist from Mein Kampf. Although the DAP and the Thule Society diverged in the views on ideology and action, there was a direct line of symbological succession between two groups in the form of the swastika. Friedrich Krohn, a Tulinian and a member of the Garmin and Orden, since 1913, he earned the reputation of the DAP expert as a result of his collection of 25,000 books on folky subjects for the use of party members. In May 1919, Krohn wrote a memorandum with the title, Is the swastika suitable as the symbol of the National Socialist Party? In which he proposed the left-handed swastika, that is, clockwise in common with those of the Theosophists and German and an end as the symbol of the DAP. He evidently preferred the sign in this direction on the account of its Buddhistic interpretation as the talisman of the fortune and health, whereas it is right-handed, that is, anti-clockwise, counterpart betoken decline and death. However, since most lists in swastikas and the device of the Thule Society has been right-handed, it is clear that there was no standard usage regarding the direction of swastika and the folkers tradition. Hitler actually favoured a right-handed, straight-armed swastika and prevailed upon Kron in that committee discussion to revise his design. Kron was responsible for the colouring scheme of black swastika in a white circle on a red background. At the foundation meeting of the local Standberg group of the NSDAP on 20th May 1920, this swastika, originally proposed by Kron and modified by Hitler, made its first public appearance as the flag of a new movement. In 1981, when Michael Zeremy would defined the swastika as the armorial shield of the Aryan race, his heraldic metaphor was opposite in several senses. 
Aryan swastika was both the precursor heralding an absent or delay referent meaning and also its defensive shield. It was also heraldic insofar as the tradition of the symbol and the reputation of the sign was mimesis of the racial lineage and pedigree. In this heraldic form, the swastika itself does not mean it produces meaning by announcing it on the one hand and obscuring it on the other. In Nazi European ideology, the index swastika is inherited from Aryan ancestors, not the other way around. Whether Hindus, Stonish people or Germanic people also use it is irrelevant. We see it in constant cultural appropriation. That means in European heraldry, a swastika is not so rare as many may believe now. Will not rehearse either the purported ancient origins of the swastika or the manifold context in which swastika-like devices are found. Like others who have written on the subject, I find in any case that such an approach fails comprehensively to mitigate the instinctive reactions the swastika and have inspired in the West. On the contrary, the 19th century antiquarian practice of spotting swastikas and building connections played a major part in the construction of what the swastikas was to become. Clive Cheeseman, the Herald Swastika in Fiona Robinson and Peter N. Lindfin, the display of heraldry, the heraldic imagination in arts and culture, the coat of arms supplementary volume 1, the Heraldry Society, London 2019. By the time Hitler was born in 1889 and then afterwards, he could have seen that symbol in a lot of places like the aforementioned Abbey, but there it was a Christian symbol. It was not so much Christian in Rudyard Kipling's books on beer bottles from Carlsberg, and it was firmly established that it is Germanic Aryan reading things through many writings and respected artworks. Martel Eskelwinch Thor's fight with the giant, 1872. Therefore, that Adolf Hitler probably never heard the word swastika. It's quite the bogus one. The swastika and the Hecken cruise are perfectly synonyms and one is the usual German translation for the other. The proper German word being in dictionaries from at least the 18th century. Viewers of Nani's world finally let us know from the writings of Adolf Hitler to know his intentions of using this. This original quote from Hitler is enough to help settle the matter. Dear viewers of Ghani's world, from all the evidence, the legitimate conclusion is Adolf Hitler's unshakable allegiance to Christianity is fake propaganda carried by this right-wing outlet and there is no connection between the ideology of Adolf Hitler and Christianity. Adolf Hitler himself clearly said the swastika signifies the mission allotted to us, the struggle for the victory of Aryan mankind and not for the Christian mankind. Adolf Hitler's unshakable allegiance is towards Aryan and not Christians. We request Swaraja, the Jaipur Dialogues and Mission Kali to verify their biased evidence once again and bring the verifiable facts in front once again to prove the claim. Dear viewers, these right-wing hate-promoting outlets come and go, but what matters is the truth, the absolute truth. Think for a while, everything is in black and white, you decide what to choose. Kindly do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more updates. And also request you to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and Reddit. Thank you.